a very special masterclass today with a guy who averages 108 against Sri Lanka, one of the great Australian players of the modern era, Michael Hussey. Thanks, Huss, for joining us, mate. No worries, Tubby. We're going to get straight into him. Young James from New South Wales, 14-year-old. He says, I find it difficult when facing bouncers and lack the confidence to attack with a hook shot. Any tips? Uh, well, OK, I guess what I'd normally try and think about when playing the hook shot is I'm still look, looking to try and get forward first. And then if you just let that little push forward, then I find I can push back quickly off that front foot to get into position to play the hook shot. And I still think it's important if you're playing the hook shot to get back and across, get the ball just on this side of your body, and then you, you'll have the confidence to be able to play the way down towards fine leg. But it is still important to look for the full ball first and use that front leg to push back, and then you can sort of get back quickly and and play the hook shot with confidence. Because that initial movement you talk about, that, that press forward, that's something you've always done though, isn't it? It's not something that you, you do deliberately for the hook shot, it's just the way you play? Yeah, definitely. I think it's dangerous if you start thinking it's going to be short start, and you're, you're hanging back on the back foot because then if they do pitch the ball up, you're not going to be in a very good position to play that ball. But I also find that I can use that front leg to push back really quickly and get into better position to play, play off the back foot as well. Terrific, mate. So that's, James, that's for you. Now for Dylan, 13-year-old from Victoria, I'm having trouble with the ball just outside the off stump, like most batsmen. Yeah, we all do, yeah. And I tend to edge the ball to the keeper or slips. How do I fix this? Is, can you fix it, and how do you, how does it go about it? Well, no, it's a difficult one. I think all batters are going to, to nick certain balls uh, you know, at some stages throughout their career. But I still think, again, like what I was saying, is, is still look to get, get really uh, in, in a good position forward. Um, I think if you're tentative with your footwork, I, I find that I, I sort of nick, nick a, a fair few more balls. So I'll really try and be positive with my footwork, get into really good position, really try and sniff that ball, and then try and play as straight as you can. You know, whatever the line of the ball is, try and line it up and just play straight down that line. If it does seem a little bit, hopefully you're good enough to play and miss it. Sometimes you get yourself into trouble as if you see it seem and then you just follow it a little bit, that's when you can find the mix as well. So my advice would be to be really positive with your footwork, get into great position, and then just play straight down the line. If it does too much, then hopefully you miss it and it goes through to the keeper. And I suppose at the end of the day, you're going to get out some way. And top water players get caught behind the stumps quite a bit. So if you nick one every now and then, sometimes you've got to walk off and say, well, bowl. Sometimes you do need to give some credit to the bowl, yeah. yeah. Not, not too often. <laughs> now, one from Peter here, 17-year-old from New South Wales. No matter how much practice I do playing straight through the offside, I always strike the ball with the inside part of the bat, which means I miss cue a lot. Are there some adjustments I can make to correct this? Well, it's a good question, actually, and, and I must say I've had some problems with this as well over, over my career. Um, and what I've tried to do is just try and grip the bat uh, less with my bottom hand. I always found that if I gripped the bat really hard with my bottom hand, it sometimes would come through slightly closed or it would just take over a bit too, too much. And much like Adam Gilchrist, if you remember back to the World Cup final in 2007, he used a squash ball in, in his glove just so he couldn't grip the bottom hand too heavy. So when I'm taking my stance, I try and make sure it's a nice, strong top hand grip and then I just literally rest the bottom hand with just one finger on, on the bottom of the bat. And that way, when I pick the bat up, the, the top hand is controlling the bat. And I find I can then play straight, straighter down the line a lot easier. Obviously, when you're going to play back foot shots, um, the bottom hand just naturally sort of comes in and takes over at certain stages. But you don't want the bottom hand taking over too early in your shots. Beautiful, mate. I think, that's, I think keep that front elbow up is also the key. I always tell kids if they use that, well, for us, the right elbow, the point where the ball, we want the ball to go, point it through covers, that's where the ball will go. That, that certainly helps as well. Uh, Luke, 13, from Queensland, on the left-handed batsman, and sometimes have trouble facing right arm over the wicket bowlers who move the ball away from me. What stump do you suggest taking guard on? It's another good question. It's going to be something uh, that we're going to have to face in this series, say, with uh, Kulasekera. He, he bowls very well to left-handers from over the wicket, can take the ball away from us. Um, I, I just... Keep it, keep it pretty simple. I like to take a, a middle stump guard. Um, and again, I think it's just really important to pick up the line of the ball and just play as straight as you possibly can. Um, if the ball does swing away or do too much, then hopefully you're just playing a nice straight line. It can, it can beat you through to the keeper. If it's not, then you can just line it up nice and straight. Um, I think if bowlers then come around the wicket, then you can move your guard over a little bit just so you can sort of get into their line a little bit and try and line the, line the ball up a little bit more. But from over the wicket, I just keep it pretty simple centre stump guard and just, just, just try and play, play naturally. Do you sometimes bat out of your crease? I know that seems to have come into the game a lot lately where batsmen actually bat out of their crease. Do you do that or just stick with the guard where you, where you normally bat? No, I think it's definitely an option, particularly if someone's swinging the ball a lot. You can maybe, maybe try and get out at him a little bit and, and try and negate some of that swing. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's definitely an option. Okay, mate. Well, 
Stay right with us. We're going to take a short break and we've got more questions for you, mate. Thanks Great. for joining us again. No worries. Back in the nets with Mr Cricket, my custom mate. Some more questions for you. Jack, 16 from Western Australia. I know it's hard to hit good full deliveries in the final overs and innings, but what sort of shots do you find are best for scoring fast runs when the pressure's on? Well, it's a good question because, yeah, uh, good death bowling can be very difficult to get away. Um, I think there's a couple of things you can try. Um, you can either come out of your crease again yeah. to try and change the length of the bowler or go back deep in your crease so you've got a bit more time to see it and maybe get underneath it. But for me personally, I generally have sort of two areas where I want to try and hit a boundary. So for me, I'm generally, if it's a little bit wide, I'm trying to hit it over the cover guy because there's generally a lot of space behind cover where you can get a boundary. Or, as every left-hander uh, knows, you've got to have a good slog over mid-wicket. <laughs> so um, I, I'm generally looking for those two areas to hit a boundary. But I think it's important that if it's not in those areas, You've got to get something on it, get bat on ball and then run as hard as you can between the wickets. It's important to, to keep getting bat on ball. If they execute a great Yorker and you can't hit it for four or six, then you've got to get something on it and run hard between the wickets. But if it's just slightly wrong and you can get it in your area, just don't hold bat and just go as hard as you can. I think that's something you do really well, get bat on ball. But you look for one ball, do you look for a ball you think, OK, that's the one I want to hit over the wickets. That, that slog sweep you talk about, you hit that really well. But seems to be, do you pick a ball or is that premeditated? Well, I, I, I sort of think, I, I just have those two areas in my head. And if, if the ball comes, if you see the ball come out of the bowler's hand and you know it's in that area, I just try not to hold back. It'll just go for it and, and hopefully it comes off. But if they execute really well or they bowl something different that you're not expecting, then yeah, you've got to be able to adapt, think quickly on your feet, get something on it into a gap, and, and you never know, you might be able to get a, a two, you know, by running hard between the wickets. Yeah, tap there, Jack. Now, one from Toby here in South Australia, 16-year-old opening batsman. And at the moment, he's making starts, but not going on to make big scores. Can you give me some advice on how to stay composed so I can convert more often? Yeah, it's another good question. I, I think it, that's where the mental game, mental side of the game comes into it, which is so important in the game of cricket. You know, you're doing the hard work to get through the initial period, you know, the hardest time to bat. You get a few runs, but then maybe you just mentally relax. So I've got like a set routine that I like to go through for every single ball, whether it's at the start of my innings or, <clears throat> or if I'm on 100 not out. Um, and, and basically I try and go through that every time, every, every single delivery. Um, but, and how it comes down to it is I normally just sort of check my stance, make sure my stance is right. And then it's about relaxing and then clearing my mind of all the negative thoughts and doubts that go through my mind. And I'm just trying to play the next delivery as well as I can. And then as soon as you've played that delivery, it's about switching off altogether. Mentally relax, have a look out in the crowd, have a look around the ground. And then when the bowler starts his run up again, bang, you go through your same routine again. And it's about having the, uh, the concentration and the discipline to go through that routine ball after ball after ball. And it's amazing how if you can just stick to your routine and keep going through that process, it's amazing how quickly you can um, face up to 100 balls, 200 balls, and, and obviously if you're facing that many balls, that's when, when you can get the big scores. Question without notice from young Mark here from Sydney. Uh, I remember playing against Mike Hussey back in the late 90s and used to be an opening batsman yourself. Has your, the way you go about an innings changed now that you're batting down the order? And what do you find more challenging or more enjoyable? Batting down the order or well, batting? I'd have to say um, opening the batting is probably the toughest toughest position to bat. Right um, answer mate, good answer. Yeah, I was hoping to say that. I definitely agree, you know, <laughs> facing the new ball, sometimes you have to come out after being in the field for 140 overs or something like that and straight back out there, you've got the bowlers when they're fresh, uh, fresh pitches, it's, it's definitely the hardest part of the game, but I really enjoy the different challenges of middle order. Um, sometimes you come in and the team's in trouble at sort of three for ten, sometimes you have to come in when the, when the team's three for three hundred and you've got to try and accelerate and, and get ready for a declaration, sometimes you get the challenge of batting with the tail and trying to annoy the opposition captain by trying to noodle the field and, and keep the strike and things like that. So I really enjoy the different challenges of, of batting in the middle order and, and the different type of scenarios you get in the game. Beautiful, mate. Um, now, I've got a question here from Will and Darling Point. Okay. Do you classify yourself as an all-rounder? <laughs> well, I, I think I have to these days. You know, I've got some pretty big scalps in my pocket. Well, I think like Kumar Sangakara is oh. in my pocket, which is a pretty, pretty handy to have. Not so. Bad. Uh, so I, I, I'd say, yeah, I'd have to say I'm a bit of an all-rounder, oh, yeah. Jamie. You're not that good. I, I reckon I can still face you. Well, though. go on, man. Get down there and I'll knock you over. Don't worry about that. Well, I've got a ball. Here you go. You can even use my bat. <laughs> it's got runs in it, this bat? I hope so. Right, I'll give us a quick go. Hang on. What are you going to bowl? That, that medium, that medium uh, what rubbish. What was that first question? Bowl? Something about the, the hook shot? <laughs> Righto, mate. Come on. See what you got. 
Shit. Get a bit close. Oh. Oh. Gotcha! Oh, the edge. <laughs> That's runs in it. That's, no, you're definitely all round. You've got me now as well. <laughs> well done. Thanks, mate. Now, just as we're walking back, I see you're wearing a booper shirt. Yes. You're a booper ambassador today. Can you tell us what you're doing there and tell us a bit more about that role that you that they are now a major sponsor of Australian cricket? Yeah, well, yeah, Booper are um, sponsors of, uh, well, the official health sponsor for Cricket Australia, and um, they, they support our support staff, you know, in, which are very important to us as yeah. players. You know, they keep us fit, they keep us healthy, they keep us on the park for longer, and I think they're all about, for all Australians, just finding a healthier you. Um, so they've been a great sponsor for us so far. Um, we hope the uh, association continues for a long time, and, yeah, we hope that... Um, they keep supporting our support staff in particular because, as I said, they are an extremely important part of our team. Well, they've picked a very healthy man to do it, mate. Congratulations okay. on that, Rob. Congratulations on your summer so far. Thank you. And good luck for the rest of the series, mate. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, mate.